Hello friends, Tech Man Pat here. It's coffee time, it's a Saturday morning, and today we are reviewing a Starlink 4G failover system from NetVault. So first of all, huge thanks to NetVault for sending me this system up here to Perth for review. These guys are based over east, and we're gonna talk about them in a second. But first of all, we're gonna go through this system. We're gonna talk about obviously installing it, setting it all up, and of course, we're going to talk about the performance and what it's actually for and why it exists. So what are we doing today? We are having a look at a Starlink system that you would have seen a video, potentially. Check out the links below. It's just sitting up right behind me over there. It's already wired up to the dish, and if you wanna see the video on how to do that, then check that out. Let's quickly jump into my desktop here to understand what this solution is. Never be without a working internet connection again. This is in collaboration with Starlink, and the idea is that you get a Starlink primary connection and a 4G LTE secondary connection. Now it is a failover system, which means once your Starlink connection drops, it'll automatically switch over to 4G. Now that sounds great and it sounds kind of standard, but there is a little trick that NetVault does with their systems and with their technology that is actually very, very unique and makes this an enterprise grade solution. It has a single IP address. It is maintained across both the Starlink system and the 4G LTE. It means that when it does swap over to this other connection, there is literally under a second of pause in your internet before it jumps straight back into a connection. Having the same IP address means that your systems, your programs, whatever you're using at the time, don't really notice anything. They just notice a dropout and all of a sudden the connection is back in, even though it swaps from the Starlink to the 4G. This is very, very incredible. It is high speed, it is low latency, and I have to point out, this is ideal for rural and remote communities, and they pointed out in this document, which I will put the links below so you can have a look. Now, the one we're looking at is a Starlink residential system. It can go of 50 to 200 megabits download bandwidth. We can have other systems for business, which goes faster and has a whole bunch of other things like prioritized network access. We've got the coolest one, which is Starlink RV. So chuck it on the back of your camper van, whatever it might be, and off you go. You've got internet wherever you are and also marine, so all those ships cruising around Australia, you go fishing, you've still got super fast internet. And that's fantastic. I won't go through everything, but the idea is it's this. You've got the Starlink dish right at the top, then you've got the NetVault 4G antenna here, and then you've got your Fortinet modem slash router down here, which controls the whole system. Now, unfortunately, because it's not being done by a professional, it's being done by me. I've set up a very janky setup. The Starlink dish is on the roof and the antenna is gonna be set up on a post, which we'll look at in a moment. And I've received some documentation where to point the actual antenna, so I have a rough idea. But we'll see if an idiot like me can set up a business grade system like this at home. So lastly, let's talk about actually NetVault and their capabilities. They've been in the business for over 12 years. They can do business fiber, NBN, Starlink obviously, and 4G, 5G, and a whole bunch of other things that you will need to run a business remotely, but also locally. And the coolest thing is they've got support for all the data centers around Australia from DC 7 and 11 here in Perth to all the other DCs across the ditch. Now that means you get full coverage, full speed, wherever you are in the country when connecting to the their cloud system. So check out the links below for more information about NetVault. Again, huge thanks to those guys over there for letting me review this system right here. Let's get started by rolling the intro. Okay, coffee aside, it's time to have a look at what we're dealing with. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video, I will shortly say that there is a Starlink modem over here with an adapter, with an ethernet port that goes into a dumb switch, and that switch gets connected to this Fortinet modem. As mentioned earlier, we can ignore this one right here, but these two will be removed and they will be connected to the 4G antenna in that box. This controls everything, and this connect gets connected to that little dumb switch over there and brings through the Starlink internet connection. And it has the 4G modem inside here, and that obviously has the antenna to connect to that 4G tower. What this means is that you get some really cool analytical information that NetVault provides, and that's awesome. They're all about being transparent, which is 
really good. You know, you are a customer, you wanna know what's going on with the network. They're not trying to hide things from you and I really like that. This system's gonna be in your home, you've got full access to it and you've also got full support from them, which is really cool. So we're gonna install this and then we're gonna have, obviously, gonna have to use some tools because we have to set up this antenna right here. So first of all, we've got two big cables because there are two cables going three. There is a 4G connection here and a 3G, 4G connection here. We're gonna connect them both. If I pull this out, oh, here we go. It's not heavy, but it is large. It is the antenna. We've got the two plugs at the bottom right here and then we've got a mounting system on the back. So this is going to be mounted on a post. So we're gonna do first, we're gonna put this up. We're gonna then connect the Fortinet system over here to the Starlink and then run the cables back to this unit right here. So let's get started with setting stuff up. As you can see, this was just a giant umbrella, but I do have a giant metal post that I was able to fit in there and that's gonna get mounted right at the top. And according to the documentation I have, I have to point it basically that way and I know there's a building here so I'm gonna try and fit it right in between here hopefully you get the professionals to do it but if you are doing it yourself get a post up on a roof and point it that way there's the styling dish it's already connected inside and then we're gonna have to run some cables back into the house the good thing about this is I can just lean it over bring it down and start installing it on the ground this is obviously waterproof because it is on the outside I'm gonna try to get it as high as possible again this is temporary so hopefully this will be all right that was very easy and now we just have to tighten it all up and get the angles right so it doesn't just fall over obviously the cables are going to the bottom here so we want that at the bottom of the post and we can just literally nicely lift it up because there's a nice weight up there oh perfect and there you have it the net vault antenna is up in this test we're not trying to get the best speed we just want this to be the fail over when anything happens to starlink so this should be enough of a clear signal to it all right we've got the 45 plus here and the 45 minus we'll hopefully see if the instructions give us any particular reason and way to point this and connect this but i'm pretty sure i guess positive negative all we need to do is take off this cap and literally screw that in all plugged in and I've just taken the black cap off this one to denote that this is the positive. I don't think it's gonna matter much since it's an antenna. All right, the cables are a little bit short. Once my son gets back, these cables won't be there, but it is going through his toy area, play area, whatever you might wanna call it. And this is the Fortinet right here. We've got the dumb switch right here. Okay, we've taken off the paddles from the 4G, 3G antennas right here. And we're gonna plug these right in. And it doesn't really say plus or minus, it's just 4G, 3G. So we'll just plug them in and see what happens. And we're plugged in. Now it's time for the power and an ethernet port. Now the ethernet port needs to go into the WAN port, which is right here right at the front and also the power is right at the front so we're gonna plug that right into there I do need two hands for this I think oh, no, there it is powered on now we're gonna navigate to the cable the white cable here to our dumb switch and that's gonna go into port number two easy as that and this dumb switch all it's doing is just sharing that connection into here and providing the Starlink in it so this bit right here goes to the adapter between the Starlink antenna up top, or the dish, I suppose, which is square now, so it's not really a dish, into the Starlink modem. So we just get the ethernet out and that's all providing power through there. So this whole setup is all you need to basically get rural internet with failover. Now, let's set up the test. This is a spare ethernet cable. Those are scissors, and we're gonna cut the cable between the Starlink and the Fortinet. Now I'm not gonna cut the one provided by NetVault, but they did give me this idea. They did it themselves on video, so I'll link that below, because I thought it was like quite cool, but you can never believe a company when they do an extreme test like that. So it's best, I guess, if I do it. So we're gonna connect this up, then we're gonna use those scissors while we run a few tests on the computer. From the Fortinet modem right here, port two and three is LAN. So we're gonna take this really long extension cable and run this into my home network and disconnect my current internet. So when we go on a computer, we're using only this. I have had to set nothing up. Starlink, this Fortinet, that antenna, it's all been a physical setup, plugging things in and then just it automatically connecting. I have had to do nothing in the back end, but we do get access to a front end to see some analytics. So we'll go to that in a second. We're gonna cut that ethernet cable between the Starlink and the Fortinet modem. And so I've got a lot of things set up behind me. So let's go through what we're gonna be looking at. First of all, this is the net monitoring system. So shortly called NetMon. 
Really cool stuff. As I said, NetVault is very transparent about their system, so you actually get access to this. And on here, we've got a speed test. We're just gonna quickly run a speed test to see the speeds that we get with Starlink. And then we've got a, a command prompt running here and pinging Google. And what we're gonna be seeing here is the actual timeout when we disconnect Starlink. And I'm gonna use my mobile. We're gonna run over there live, disconnect it and run straight back. The idea is that the failover will happen in under one second as we cut that cable. And that means there's gonna be basically no interruption to your internet. Now, what I wanted to also test is I wanted to install a Steam game at the same time and see if there's a little drop in speed. So, at the moment, we have Starlink connected. It is all live. We have our LTE, which says, okay, the, the signal isn't that great. I'd say that the signal could be better, but again, it is a temporary setup. I just want to see the failover happen. So I expect the dying light installation to completely like slow down to a crawl. And we'll do that as a second round and we'll just unplug the cable. And then if we go back, we can see all our information. On the right hand side, we've got how long it's been up and we've got a system okay and some logs as to what happens. And you'll see at the point in time when I do swap it over, you see some logs change over. So right now we're getting a ping of about 78, 79, 68. That's pretty incredible. We are definitely on Starlink. We're gonna quickly run a speed test. So go on speed test. We're gonna see what speed we get on Starlink. We do have an IP address that says VM Vault. So that's completely locked into this setup. There's, it's not gonna change. That's the really unique thing. So right now we're getting 100, wow, holy crap. Did somebody turn on the tap? 200 megabits a second on Starlink. 211, what's the average? 209 megabits a second. That's, that's fantastic, 15 megabits up. Okay, if you saw some of the shorts I did on YouTube a little while back, uh, I only got 150 top, but this is incredible. Uh, the documentation said that uh, Starlink should only go up to 150, but on paper it is up to 250. So this is awesome. I'm so incredibly impressed. 200 megabits down on a satellite with an 85 ping and an almost nine megabits up. Okay, this is, uh, this I did not plan. This is awesome. And if we refresh our actual IP, we'll see here that it is still the same IP, 103.150.246.166. Let's continue. We're gonna run across and we're gonna disconnect the cable. We're seeing the screen, okay, 209. Let's go and uh, have a look. Do, 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 do. There's a cable, lots of cables. Boop, 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 Okay. And we're here at the setup. This is already, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Is this a waste of a cable? Uh, I'll just remake it. I have lots of cables, so let's cut it close to here. But uh, as you can see, this is the cable from Starlink into this dumb little switch, and that goes to the forward and that. This is just an in-between. See the white cable there that goes in. There is no magic. There's no anything weird going on. We're just gonna slice this blue cable. Wow, that was really easy. I didn't know that was as easy. All right, let's run back and follow that cable. Boop -a -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, we're back at the computer. Oh, there it is. There was a timeout, but we're back on. So, in all that time, it has disconnected and reconnected. So we're gonna do another speed test. So the IP address is still 103.150.246.166, fantastic. There it is, 20 megabits a second down, and we are on 4G right now. And it's not even well set up. That tower antenna that I, put with a table on top of an uh, umbrella stand, it is doing what it is supposed to be doing. All right, we got 13 down, 15 up. You have noticed no issues with the internet. Everything was working. We got one little timeout just before and we're back to it. Okay, and we're gonna jump into another test. We're gonna replug that cable and then we're gonna start downloading Dying Light, give it a few seconds of Starlink, but then we're gonna unplug it again. We're gonna check back and see what happened to the actual connection. Let's do that now. Okay, we got 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90 perfect we're back on starlink the speed is now 115 120 wow that's impressive 130 all green light lte statistics okay system health okay uh, we had a few timeouts that was probably it switching back to starlink when i plugged it back in so let's start a download of dying light 2 i chose this game because it's about 45 gigs it should give us enough time to test everything we have the download happening let's click on downloads it is currently going at seven nine megabytes a second ten megabytes oh 12. what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to put on the video and we're going to run back to see what happens when i unplug it and you're downloading a big file now obviously if you're playing a video game what's going to happen is well you're going to get a bit of lag in between and you're going to reconnect straight away it shouldn't kick you let's quickly go right now it is downloading at 13.7 uh, megabytes or 15.1 megabytes a second and everything is green light and recording. There we go, let's go unplug the cable. This time I have removed the scissors just in case I make a mistake. So this is a Starlink connection, let's just undo that. Bam, we should now be swapping over to LTE, let's go. A little bit of an interruption, a little bit of a speed drop, 3.1, 2.8. We are now back onto LTE. Hopefully it'll just show us that, yep, there's been a speed drop, but the download continues. We're at 2.2, 2.3 megs. That to me is what LTE speeds are like when you're downloading a file. So friends, let's put that cable back in and see what happens to the network speed when we're downloading from Steam and see how long it takes before it swaps over to that faster connection. Let's see what the Fortinet system that NetVault has designed will do. But again, this is, plug and play. I received the antenna, I received the Fortinet modem box, I got the Starlink, set that up as normal with the Starlink. I didn't have to use the app, which is really interesting because it's all connected and basically controlled by the service you have here. So I've plugged everything, followed the instructions, pointed the antenna at the direction that the report said to, at the height that I could only achieve. They did do it at four meters, the report, so I should have got it to four meters, but I think I got it to about three and I'm getting some really decent speeds. So right now, uh, it is going to try and connect back. We've got a speed of 1.7 megabytes a second on dying light here on Steam. And all of a sudden, we've got a few request timeouts. Let's see if it can pop over. There it is, it's picking up speed. We are back on Starlink. I'm still very impressed. Look at that jump straight away. So I'm guessing when it goes back, it takes a little while, but straight from the failover to 4G from Starlink, it's instantaneous. But going back is a little bit slower and we can really see that in that jump just here. It went all the way down to the lowest speed. So it was still maintaining a connection where you're still getting data, but it was really, really, really slow. And then bam, Starlink takes over and off we go. So you will just see a speed downgrade and a bunch of timeouts, I suppose. All right, friends, conclusion time. Let's talk this failover solution with Starlink. NetVault has taken advantage of an already existing satellite system like Starlink, combined it with an already existing 4G failover system and combine it to create an incredible solution for somebody who needs access on the fly in a remote area and does not want to get disconnected if Starlink goes down. The biggest complaint people have said online is how often Starlink drops that connection. From my use in Metro Perth, it's been very rare. Every couple of hours I see something drop out on the app and give me a warning, but it comes back in a couple of seconds. If it goes down for longer, that's when the 4G failover jumps in. And at that point, if Starlink has gone down for long enough for your 4G to trigger, that means it's gonna stay offline for a little bit longer. On the back end, when you wanna connect back to Starlink, it does seem to take a little while. It's probably not a big problem, especially when you're already using 4G. You're like, well, I'm already on 4G. When it's gonna get bumped up to Starlink, I'll be happy when it reconnects. And while the download speed dropped on Steam, it was still connected. We were still getting internet at a very, very low speed speed before it incredibly just all of a sudden jumps back onto the Starlink connection and flies off. So from my point of view, if I'm working somewhere, I'm on a video call with potentially the board that I work for and I want to prove to them that I can work remotely in a farm that's you know, a thousand kilometers away from Perth and I still want to be employed by this company that's based locally in Perth and I want to live remotely, then having this 4G failover system is pretty darn cool. They won't notice on the video call that anything happened to me. They'll 
probably be a little pause and we straight back to it. Now, of course, this means there has to be a 4G tower near you, but the size of that antenna probably gives you a massive range. And at the moment, I'm only about three to four kilometers away from an Optus antenna. So that's, I guess, giving me an advantage. If you're out in the bush, you probably mount this quite high up. Uh, you will need a bit of a cable extension, but from my understanding, Nedvolt will jump out and actually inspect your site, or at least check it in a way to make sure they give you the right cables, the right software, the right hardware, and even professionally set this up for you. Now, at this point in time, I set everything up myself with instructions on PDF, as you saw, that told me what to do, where to log in, and I figured it out. And so I'm very impressed with this solution. Obviously, Starlink in itself is a solution that we will review in a separate video and talk about the benefits and if it's worthwhile for you. But the 4G failover system offered by NetVault is, in my opinion, incredible. That ability to keep the same IP address makes everything seamless. It just works. And that's the magic ingredient in mentioned before. And most importantly, let's take a look at the pricing. This is my invoice. It is uh, redacted a little bit for my personal information, but the prices are official. All the prices in the total column are excluding GST, because obviously it's a business invoice. It's not your standard one, but we can have a quick run through them. So obviously the Starlink's 409 plus GST. We've got the monthly Starlink costs, 127 plus plus GST, so 139. These costs are locked in. If you go through Starlink or if you go through NetVault, they are the same price. Then if we look at the actual 4G failover, the setup, the Fortinet hardware, where it's a one-off 1250, and then you've got your seamless failover internet service through that 4G LTE for a monthly 175 plus GST. There is also a monthly IP cost of $20 and a one-off for the antenna and a one-off for the management monitoring service. Up, but that seems to be zero, so it must just be included. And look, no monthly monitoring fees. Interesting. So the total one off with GST is $2,154.90, and the monthly ongoing, which is probably the most important, is $332.20. So this solution is not cheap, but it is meant for business. And if it's a business owner paying for it, then it'll probably be definitely worthwhile compared to other services. So Friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, a little bit of a unique solution that you might not have heard of. If it's something that you wish to check out, check out the links below, have a look at NetVault's website, contact them if you want more information, and of course, like this video if you did. And again, big thanks to NetVault for sending me this solution for review. I'll talk to you guys all later with another Starlink video. Thanks and bye.